this is Blake Atwood with FaithVillage.com, and I'm talking with Amina Brown. Uh, you may know spoken word artist Amina from her performances at many a Catalyst conference or through one of her many YouTube videos or as the author of her recently released book, Breaking Old Rhythms. On the other hand, you may not know Amina Brown, which is sad for you, but we'll fix that today. Uh, in addition to being an absurdly talented spoken wordsmith, she's written an honest, humorous, engaging book that encapsulates her passions for music, dance, her husband, and above all, God. We're grateful that she's broken the rhythm of her day to talk with us about the book. So thanks for your time today, Amina. Thanks for having me, Blake. First, how do you define spoken word poetry, and how did you get into performing as a spoken word artist? I, I like to say that spoken word is like if hip-hop and jazz had a poetry baby. <laughs> That's what spoken word is, at least the style of spoken word that I'm doing. Very much uh, inspired by the rhythms of John Coltrane and Miles Davis, but also really inspired by just growing up with hip-hop and a lot of hip-hop's use of rhyme and words without having to stick to a particular beat. So so you enjoyed the free-form nature of it? I did, I did. I started off trying to be a rapper, which didn't work out very well for me because I just couldn't stick to the, at that time, the average hip hop verse was about 16 bars and I'd always end up with 37 bars or 34 bars, some really odd number. And then I went to see the movie Love Jones actually. <laughs> and I saw Lorenz Tate's character playing this book and word poet. And I said, well, I can do that. That's like me getting a rap and no one gets to tell me when to stop. That sounds really awesome. Very nice. Uh, so what's your day to day life like? Well, uh, it really depends for us. Uh, we're sort of on the road and off the road is how like our schedule goes. So if I'm on the road, it really depends on the event. Sometimes that's a coffee place. Sometimes that's a conference. Sometimes it's a college. So uh, because of that, those could be night shows. Those could be night shows and having to get up in the morning and do a morning session for a conference. It could also be Sunday services on the weekends. Uh, so it really is very event-based when we're on the road. And when we're at home, it's just like two people working from home. My husband and I both have our own business. Uh, he's a DJ and also has a media company that he's going to launch soon. So uh, he's busy working on that, and I'm writing and uh, doing all the boring stuff like signing contracts and checking email and uh, all that other entrepreneurial stuff. So that's sort of uh, how it goes for us. We kind of have a different routine depending on if we're at home or on the road. So you, you exist in a bunch of different rhythms. <laughs> yeah, all the time. My, my rhythms are breaking all the time. <laughs> yeah. So let's, let's talk about uh, your book, which is your first book, I believe, and tell us what you know the genesis story behind it. Well, I, I really felt nervous about writing a book. There are so many books that have been written that have been written really well. So that was a big daunting idea. And I just tried to think, well, what can I write that's me? Um, Toni Morrison has a quote also where she says, you know, if you want to write, you should write books that you would read. And so I tried to think, you know, what's the kind of book that I would really like to actually read myself? And so that sort of got me started on, well, what's, what is this idea that I've always you know, loved since I first heard this story about Bruce Lee and the idea of broken rhythm as a principle in his martial art, you know, and what does that mean to my life? What are the moments I've had broken rhythm? And I literally just sort of wrote out a timeline of my life and started kind of putting the notches where things had happened, where my rhythm was broken, where I chose to break rhythm. And realized those are the moments where I found my faith. Those are the moments where I learned the most, where I grew the most. And I thought, well, maybe using that as a metaphor, uh, other people would identify with that story. I've only seen you perform um, a few times, but I feel as if this book is quintessentially you. So do you feel that that's true? And did you set out to write such a personal book in the first place? It is true that the book is quintessentially me. I didn't set out to do that at first, actually. My initial proposal I sent into the publisher was like a how-to guide, how to break old rhythms. And I you know, sent in the proposal, and they accepted, and I started working on the actual manuscript and realized, 
hey, you can't write a how-to book on how to break an old rhythm. That doesn't make any sense. Breaking old rhythms, I mean, rhythm in and of itself is this very, like, intrinsic, intuitive sort of experience. There's no way to have this formula or this equation or bullet points as to how you experience that in your life. And so it's literally an experience, even in writing the book, just between God and I, of, of having only two chapters from that proposal that I could actually keep. And I remember that moment I was sitting in this little room in the library. You know how you can sign up for those rooms and kind of, <laughs> they have no windows. You shut yourself in there and write. And I literally looked at my computer and thought, I have nothing. I have to start from scratch. When I thought this was going to be easy, I just already had this outline. This would you know, work out great. And so I really had to break a lot of my own rhythms, actually, to really dig into the story. And so in the middle of that process, I decided this isn't a how-to guide. I'm going to write a book of stories. And my hope is that other people in hearing my story will hear their own stories echoed as well. And that maybe God speaks to us in that way. Very nice. Very good answer. Uh, so what was the most difficult part of the book? Oh, man. I think the most difficult part was having to dig and dig and dig for those stories. Really forced me to have to be honest. Uh, there were a couple of times I had a great editor. Shout out to Dave Zimmerman because he was a fantastic editor. But he, he had a couple of times where he read through my first drafts and he would say, you're not telling us the whole story here. You're not, you're not going all the way inside of this particular thing you're saying here. And I was like, hey, hey, I thought your job as an editor was to tell me I'm awesome. <laughs> you know, I didn't think you were going to come back and push me and press me that way. But I, now looking at the end result of the book, I really appreciate those questions because it, it just felt like, someone's ringing you all the way dry, like you're just a dish rag, they're ringing you out, but it forced me to have to unearth those stories in the best way that I could. I'm really thankful for that.